In this video, you'll learn how to set up your WL18XX with the AM335X evaluation module to connect to the internet and pair with Bluetooth devices using the Linux platform. For this demonstration, you'll need the following hardware. An AM335X EVM, a WL18XX COM8 module, a SD card with a minimum of 2 gigabytes of memory, a USB to DB9 serial connector for serial output from the EVM to the PC, a computer running Microsoft Windows 7 or XP operating system, a Linux machine to flash the SD card, an 802.11 BGN 2.4 GHz wireless access point, and a Bluetooth remote device such as a cell phone or a tablet. First, let's take a look at the Ylink 18xx wiki page using the link provided. The features of the WL1835 module can be evaluated using either the AM335x EVM or a BeagleBone development board. Getting started guides for both platforms are also listed on this page. In order to communicate with the AM335x EVM and run the demo, You'll first need to download and install a serial port terminal program on the computer. For Windows, you could use TerraTerm or PuTTY, but for this demo, I'll be using PuTTY. To install PuTTY, visit PuTTY.org and click on the download link. Before we get started, we need to verify that the Switch 3 and Switch 4 DIP switches have been configured correctly. Switch 3 and Switch 4 can be found on the back of the AM335X EVM. Make sure the switches are in the same position as shown here. Additionally, we need to verify that the Switch 6 dip switches are all set to the off position. Switch 6 is located on the AM335X EVM daughter card just below the LCD. Make sure the switches are in the same position as shown here. Now, use a supplied serial DB9 cable to connect to the UART connector J12 on the AM335X EVM. You may need to make use of a serial to USB converter like one of these to connect the other end of the DB9 cable to your host PC. Connect the serial adapters and connect the USB side to any of the USB ports on your PC. Now, connect the WL18XX COM8 module to the AM335X EVM by inserting the module with the text facing you into the COM connector, which is located on the back of the AM335X EVM. Next, insert the AM335X EVM Linux SD card into the SD card slot located next to the WL18XX COM connector. Note that you should have received a flashed SD card with the purchase of the EVM, but you can find the latest WL18XX software releases on the WL18XX wiki under Software System. Confirm that the power switch is in the off position, then connect the power cable to the power jack on the baseboard. Before you power on the board, you need to find out what COM port the EVM is connected to on your computer. Open PuTTY or any other serial port terminal program and then open the device manager on your PC. Navigate to Windows, then Control Panel, then Device Manager, and click on the Ports drop-down arrow. You should see a port labeled Prolific USB to Serial COM Port or something similar enumerated with a COM port number. Your COM port number may not be the same as the one shown here, but that isn't a problem. Remember your COM port number for configuring PuTTY. In PuTTY, select Serial under the connection type. Under the Serial line, you'll see COM1. This is what you need to change to the port number that you saw in the device manager. You'll also need to change the speed to 115200. Then, use the selection pane on the left to navigate to Serial. Make sure the Serial line to connect to and speed match the values you entered earlier. You'll also need to click on the Flow Control drop-down and select None. 
Once those settings have been configured, click on Open. Now, boot the EVM by moving the power switch to ON. If the serial port is configured correctly, you'll see an output on your serial terminal. You'll also see the system boot into the Linux kernel on the EVM's LCD, but we won't be using that LCD to configure the settings. Once the boot has completed, you'll be prompted for a login in the terminal. Enter the word root and press enter. We're now ready to configure the EVM to connect to a non-secured access point. First of all, you'll need to make sure you have a non-secured access point set up and connected to the internet. Then, you'll need to enable the WLAN0 interface by using the command if config WLAN0 up and press enter. You should see a result like this. This indicates that the firmware is up and running now. Now, scan for the access points around you so that you can connect to one. Scan for access points by using the following command and press enter. You should now see a list of all of the available access points within range on the terminal screen. To connect to the access point, use the command IWWLAN0, connect, and type the name of the access point you would like to connect to. For example, I connected to WL8 demo by using the command IWWLAN0 connect WL8 demo. In a few seconds, you should see the following print on the terminal screen. And go ahead and press enter again. We can now check the connection by using the command IWWLAN0 link and press enter. Expect to see a result similar to this on your terminal screen, which indicates that you are now connected to your selected access point. The next step is to request an IP address from the access point using DHCP request. Type the command UDHCPC I WLAN0 and press enter. You should see a similar result on your terminal screen. To verify the obtained IP address, type the command if config and press enter. Under the WLAN0 in the INET address field, you should see the same IP address that you obtained from the previous results. Check the connection by using the ping command to ping the access point's IP address. For example, the IP address of my access point is 192. Dot one six eight dot one dot one zero two. So I'll enter ping one nine two one six eight dot one dot one zero two and press enter. If you see the following results, you've successfully connected to the internet. To stop the pinging, simply press Control Z. Now we'll initialize the Ylink 8's Bluetooth capability and connect it with a remote Bluetooth device. Begin by typing the command cd ss1 into your serial terminal. Then type the command dot forward slash ss1 bt pm space ampersand to start an instance of the Bluetopia Platform Manager server in the background. Next, type the command dot forward slash linux sppm to run the desired executable to load a command shell for command execution. Simply type 1 space 1 to initialize the stack. Then type 9 space 1 to enable the Bluetooth and power it on. Before moving forward, make sure that the Bluetooth is on and discoverable on your remote Bluetooth device. Use command 16 space 0 to start device discovery so that we can pair with a remote device. To stop device discovery, type 17. Once you have completed device discovery, look for the BD underscore ADDR address of the device you would like to connect with and take a note of it. Now, 
you'll need to register for authentication by using the command 26. To pair with a device, enter 22 and the bd underscore addr address, which was listed when we started device discovery. When it prompts you to confirm the passkey to pair with the WL183X device, enter 30 space 1 into the terminal. Now click OK on your remote Bluetooth device. Look at your remote Bluetooth device and confirm that you have successfully connected the remote device to the module via Bluetooth. One last thing we want to demonstrate is that Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can coexist. To demonstrate this, let's ping the access point again to see if we are still connected to the internet. First, type quit to exit the directory, and then use the ping command as we did before. You can see that we are still connected to the internet and the remote Bluetooth device is still connected. Congratulations, you've just set up the WL18XX and AM335X evaluation module to connect to the internet and a desired remote Bluetooth device. We recommend you use this example as a starting point to run more advanced demos in the future. Good luck and have fun using the Texas Instruments WL18XX module with the AM335X EVM.